What were you doing before you were in music? I was a healthcare administrator for about six years, which is incredibly depressing. Well, I'll kind of bring you back to the old days of washing bedpans, huh? Yeah. I never wash bedpans, thank you very much. I hired people like you to do that for yeah. me. <laughs> I've known Fuzz the longest in, in the band through mutual friends, and we were playing in different local bands. We were rehearsing in a public storage place. We had nowhere to rehearse, so we rented out a storage spot, a little shed, and we would go in there. And then a couple other local bands start moving into these because it, you know, they heard that we were doing this, and this was becoming pretty convenient and affordable. Me, Mike, and Fuzz were all playing in different bands that were rehearsing in this storage spot. So it was a little group of, of friends. We would go by and check out the other band and stuff. It becomes kind of a soap opera, a little circle of, of friends that seem to <clears throat> bounce from band to band, just trying to find trying to find each other, trying to find the right guys to, to play with. Well, I was in a band with Mike. I was in a band with Danny, and then Mike and Dan. And eventually we found the right mix. You know, one day their band broke up and my bro band broke up, but we all knew we could jam. It was like, let's get together and see if we can do it. And we jammed and it clicked. You spend a lot of time trying to find the right guys that are as motivated as you. And there's usually always one or two slackers in a band or somebody who's just not up to par with everybody else. Who's dedicated and who's good? who's not maybe the greatest player, but who's got the drive. We just decided to leave other projects and get together. We're like, okay, we're all dedicated into what we do. Let's see if we can do this together. A few years later, me and Dan, for whatever reason, were out of bands, called up Mike. That was nine years ago, and we've been together ever since. I, there's so many people back in Chicago that are way better than I am. It'll never do nothing, because they just don't have the drive. And that's, that's, you know, that's how myself, that's what brought me, Dan, and Mike together. We had been searching for a singer for, for years and years. Got lucky with Dave. The dreaded IE ad. People in Chicago will know what that is. David came out after auditioning for your 50 knuckleheads. I met the guys by answering an ad in the Illinois Entertainer, which is a local music publication in Chicago. I had been on like 20 other auditions that month. You know, and I was just tired of going in and trying to find something that was worthwhile in a sea of shit. Went over to the rehearsal spot, and full on like stoner mode, with jean shorts and sandals and a t-shirt. Didn't give a shit. David walks in, kind of fitting that stereotype that we, you know, that we have of the Northsiders with his, you know, his sandals and his, and we're thinking, oh, this guy, he's gay. You know, they must think I look like a faggot, and I think that they look like old washed up glam rockers. There they are, all with hair down to their asses, and some of them kind of feathered looking. And, <laughs> and like I said, at that point, I just didn't give a shit anymore. I just wanted to find out if they had anything to offer. You know, out of all singers that we had talked to or auditioned, he was the only singer who was ready to go with originals. And that impressed me just to attempt that. I, I think just to walk in a room with musicians that you don't know and to have the balls to say, let's just, you know, let's just jam. And they gave me the mic and, and I started playing a song. I listened to it for about a minute. And the melody came into my head and started singing and had some lyrics that I had written previously. After a minute or two, he just starts uh, just banging out these melodies that were huge. And I'm sitting there, I'm playing my guitar, and I'm grinning from ear to ear, trying not to give it away that I like this guy. You know, because I don't want to, you know, yeah, we'll give you a call back, we'll, you know, discuss it. But I was just like, chill up my spine. I'm like, there's something here. It sounds cliche, but he, he fit, uh, fit the mold. He, he, we clicked right off the bat.